Hello to all of our Pleasant Green parishioners, our congregation as a whole, and to all of our listeners. This is Minister Leonard Harris, and we are fortunate and blessed to come before you once again to share the Word of God. This is Lesson 8 for April the 23rd, 2023, and our lesson's title is Restored Friendship. Lesson 8, Restored Friendship. Our devotional reading is from 2 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, verses 1 through 11. And our background scripture is John, the 21st chapter, verses 15 through 25. And our printed passage is John, the 21st chapter, verses 15 through 19. And our key verse is the 21st chapter of John and the 15th verse and it reads when they had finished eating Jesus said to Simon Peter the son of Jonas do you love me more than these yes Lord he said you know that I love you Jesus said Feed my lambs. Our lesson's aims for this Sunday's lesson is, or are, recall the actions and attitudes that led to Peter's broken relationship with Jesus. Search your heart for actions and attitudes that harm your relationship with Christ. Identify someone with whom you need to reconcile and identify how you might appropriately communicate your regret or forgiveness. Our lesson has two parts to it and the first part is the 21st chapter of John verses 15 through 17 entitled restored to minister and then our second part is the 21st chapter of John verses 18 through 19 entitled martyred to glorify martyred to glorify let us pause for a word of prayer Heavenly Father, we once again just lift our voices to say thank you. Thank you for all of your many blessings, more than we can number and more than we can count and acknowledge. Thank you for the things you continue to do for us, those that we recognize, as well as those that we overlook or take for granted. We thank you for all things. Most importantly, we thank you for your word, scripture, that is forwarded for us, that we may read it, learn it, and apply it to our daily living. And we thank you that your word is a living word. It applies to our living in this day and in this time. As we indulge, we ask that you would reveal to us what you would have us to know. And as always, compel us by your spirit that we live out the things that we learn. And we ask it all in the name of Christ, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. Our lesson, uh, though it just has uh, two parts to it and four verses uh, in total, it centers around Peter and the conversation that Peter had with Christ. And 
if we would use uh, descriptions uh, to try and uncover uh, what we have before us, uh, some might would say that it insinuates that it is similar to a character assassination of Peter, that it involves insinuating that uh, there are some flaws in Peter's actions and attitude uh, embodied in Peter's character. And therefore, a question is repeated and probed to Peter three times. And in, in our human experience, we sometimes may have encountered a altercation or may have encountered a situation where uh, someone uh, asked us something more than once. And um, because the question was repeated, we uh, sometimes uh, become a little aggravated or maybe uneased or uh, we may uh, feel as though maybe the, the person uh, didn't understand the answer that we gave or instead of me or the person in question instead of them being confused maybe the person that is proposing and asking the question repeatedly maybe they're confused or maybe they don't understand but as we look at this endeavor and we look at this lesson today we are quite familiar uh, with the storyline of Christ asking Peter the question of does he love him? And then attaching to that, that Peter, if you do love me, then feed my lambs or feed my sheep. And so we see in the lesson that uh, the action that is suggested or the action that is presented as a result of Peter proclaiming that he loved Christ is described in three different forms. First, it is described as feed my lambs and then feed or take care of my sheep, and then again re-emphasized, feed my sheep. And one of the things that we should make association with here, because one of the points of our lesson is to contrast or to look at the actions and attitude of Peter. So one of the things we should definitely uh, put out in the front of our lesson is, is that love is a action word. Love is a action word. It's not a uh, idle or isolated statement. So it's not just a verbal proclamation. Uh, saying it is easy, but demonstrating it requires action. And therefore, when Christ repeated this question to Peter, to Peter it was to emphasize to Peter that it's not just a response, Peter. 
uh, I'm not just needing you to uh, give the standard response. Uh, of course, yes, certainly, by all means. Oh, my goodness. Lord, you know I love you. No, Peter, that's not, that's not the response that's required here. Uh, what is required is that what you say with your lips has to be demonstrated with your actions. And that is for all of the disciples of Christ. That's for all of us who proclaim to be followers of Christ, is that our actions have to demonstrate what our lips say. And so what, one of the things that is brought out in the lesson is uh, a, a response from a pastor uh, who noticed something different uh, in the response of his congregation uh, when he would deliver a message. And I want to uh, read this aloud. And it says, One pastor was heard to say that he got more amens from the congregation when he talked about blessings than he did when teaching about how to live to receive them. Unfortunately, the feel-good sermons are often more readily accepted than those that outline the requirements of what it takes to follow Christ. And in our introduction, I thought that that was well said and worthy of entertaining. And so there are just a couple of passages of scripture that uh, we want to read uh, uh, to just give a, a little insight and to heighten and to highlight uh, what the pastor mentioned uh, from his own experience uh, in the introduction. We, we want to uh, just uh, lift uh, two scriptures here, uh, both from the book of Matthew. And uh, the one is the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew. And uh, we will begin it uh, at verse 24. And this is the cost of discipleship. Uh, it reads, Matthew 16, starting at verse 24. If anyone, then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it for a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Now again, we said that love is an action word, but it's not just a verbal statement, but it's an action word. And here, Christ is explaining to his disciples that if they want to truly be his disciples, that first uh, they need to deny themselves, and that is to deny the desires of themselves, and then take up their cross and follow him, illustrating that there is a price that we pay to be disciples unto 
to Christ. But also, it reiterates or it confirms for us that although because Christ himself gave up his life for all of us, but although it speaks about that uh, whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And and so uh, there is a reward in serving Christ, and there is life beyond the grave, and there is a eternal relationship with God and not a temporary relationship with God. And we find also in the 10th chapter of Matthew, uh, again, we're speaking of the discipleship. And we're looking at this from a human stance. We're looking at uh, recognizing what Christ illustrates to his disciples that they should expect to encounter as they begin to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. And so here uh, in Matthew, the 10th chapter, and it starts at the 34th verse, it says, Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. So here uh, we think or we may uh, is expect that uh, if we do the noteworthy thing of uh, leaving the desires of our flesh and uh, just uh, human gratification, and we sacrifice uh, to do what's right in the face of wrong, that we should uh, definitely be rewarded. Uh, we live in a time and a culture where Everyone wants immediate gratification. We want immediate recognition. Uh, we want acknowledgement and observation. And every, every deed that we perform, we want a certain reception. We want to feel a spirit of reception and reward. Uh, but here, Christ is explaining to his disciples that First, you need to understand that I didn't come to okay everything that's going on. I came to challenge what is going on. I came to set at odds the rulings and the practices and the laws uh, among authorities in high places. I came to shine light where there has been nothing but darkness. And as a result of that, it's not going to be joyfully recepted. It's uh, received. Uh, it's, it's not uh, going to be uh, smiled upon. Uh, people that are corrupt and people that enjoy the darkness don't want the cover pulled off. They don't want the light to shine. They don't want to be exposed. And as a result of that, if you choose to follow me and you choose to follow my pattern and model of lifestyle, if you choose to check 
authority regardless of high or low places. If you choose to be for that which is right in the face of that which is wrong, don't expect to be congratulated for it. Uh, Even some of your family members will frown upon it. But because they hate that which is right, because they love worldliness, uh, don't be surprised if you receive the cold shoulder, if if you are uh, not uh, welcomed, uh, if you are ostracized or isolated, because Christ was trying to impress upon the disciples that what I, my message is, is going to kindle a fire uh, in the earth. Uh, It's going to destroy things that have been accepted. And as a part of the process, people are going to isolate themselves from you. They're going to distance themselves. They're going, it's going to create conflict. Uh, is there going to be confrontations from it? So uh, here, when we look at uh, why the question was proposed again and again, uh, we have to recognize the message of Christ and uh, who it was directed at. And so I, I want to uh, also shine light uh, on a, another passage of Scripture uh, uh, to, to uh, give us uh, just a clearer picture of the, uh, the reaction, the reaction from the culture of that day and still the culture of today. Now, we want to, uh, I spoke of that of Christ being against the order of the day, uh, being against the corrupt rulership of the day. And we want to just share uh, what Christ was uh, foretelling about um, the sacrifices, execution, the crucifixion. Uh, This is out of the 16th chapter of Matthew, Uh, And it starts at the 21st verse. Um, And it reads, From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. And then Christ turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. And along with that, we also want to share another scripture that gives us a little bit uh, about uh, Peter and uh, the the uh, aims of this study was to look at Peter's actions and attitude. So, so when Peter heard uh, Christ speaking of the fact that uh, he was going to be uh, judged by the elders, by the chief priest and the scribes, and he was going to be brought before court, court served to be killed but then raised on the third day. Peter was not one who uh, often held his tongue, so to speak. Uh, Peter always uh, allowed his zeal 
and allowed his actions to speak before thinking. And here is just another example of this, which again may reaffirm uh, Christ repeating the question to Peter to impart the emphasis of the love for the sheep, the love for Christ, and also the action of feeding the flock. But this is out of the 13th chapter of John, and uh, this is the 32nd verse. It says, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him, you, will, will you lay down your life for my sake? Let me repeat that. Will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. And so here Christ was trying to uh, reveal to Peter that I understand your zeal, I understand your enthusiasm, I understand your attachment to the relationship that we have established, but I need you to look deeper into this and to recognize that this is going to require some challenges on you. Sometimes it's easier for us to um, be in the following when the focus is upon the person we follow and not us alone. Sometimes it's easier for us to appear to be in concert uh, with what the, the one we follow is representing. Sometimes when the cost and the sacrifice of what we have attached ourselves to and have proclaimed that we believe and follow and will represent with our own lives, sometimes when the focus is on the individual and not on us, it's easier to be motivated to respond to certain things because after all, they're not coming after me per se. And the execution is not upon me per se. And here we learn that Peter had a disposition or demeanor about his own character where many times he, if we would use a phrase, he spoke out of turn. He spoke without really listening to what Christ was explaining and trying to impart to him. But that leads us into the conclusion of our lesson, because that brings us over to verses 18 and 19, where it reads, Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. 
Then he said to him, follow me. And certainly, uh, we know from historians that uh, Peter didn't even feel worthy to be executed the same as Christ. He chose to be crucified upside down instead of right side up. And because he felt that he was not equal, he was not equal to the, even the suffering that Christ endured. And so uh, we learn from these concluding verses that while we are young and energetic and full of zeal, uh, we can pretty much dictate to our body uh, what we will and what we will not do. Uh, but the day comes when we mature in this walk that uh, many times we have the thought, the mind, uh, we, we have a desire to want to do what we used to be able to do. But now, instead of us telling the body what we will or will not do, now the body tells us what we can or what we cannot do. But in this instance, Christ is explaining to Peter that uh, you are going to yeah, you're going to experience this, that as you grow older, uh, the work that you're going to perform, you're going to be led by others. They're going to take your hand and they're going to bring you uh, to the place of execution, the place that you don't want to ascend to that you don't want to experience and don't want to go to. But in the end, the cost of this, which I foretold you about the sacrifice that you first must lose the desire of yourself and lose the want of your life that you may gain eternal life. And so I'm just explaining to you, Peter, that the day will come well, they will come and take your hand and they will lead you to where you don't want to go. But in spite of all of that, he still extends the, extends the offer to Peter to follow me. In spite of what they intend to do to try to deprive others of the teaching of eternal life in spite of trying to uh, quiet the voice of salvation and the voice of deliverance and the voice of restoration and the voice of being redeemed in spite of those the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, the lawyers, the people in position of authority, in spite of that, still stand flat-footed in the face of, in the face of contradiction and in the face of those that uh, are not uh, following the teachings of Christ. In the, in the face of those who choose to deprive others and to manipulate the masses, in the face of that, still follow my teachings. Still follow the footprints that I've established for you. Still follow the teachings that I have demonstrated and taught unto you because these are the things of eternal life and not just temporary dwelling. 
And as we close, again, we must say that what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what will a man be willing to give in exchange for his soul? God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.